There's the illustration of the effect on bronchodilator tone, or bronchomotor tone. This is the percent of the control response of guinea pig tracheal rings to micromolar acetyl, right micromolar of acetylcholine. So you give acetylcholine to a bronchial ring, <coughs> guinea pig tracheal ring, rather, and it constricts. And we give that a value of 100%. Then you add halothane, or desferane, or sevoflurane, and the ring dilates, despite the continued presence of the acetylcholine, which would tend to cause constriction. What does that mean clinically? Where are these anesthetics useful? In what kind of patients? Asthmatics. Asthmatic. In the asthmatic, or the patient with COPD. COPD, you bet. Well, let's see that in play. Ms. Feld, I understand you have a history of asthma. Can you tell me how often you need to use your albuterol inhaler? No, I usually use it about once a week. Once a week? Mm -hmm. Okay. How bad is your asthma? Um, well, it's ever present. I mean, I, you know, I'm there when I, I have problems with it because I smoke, which I shouldn't. Okay. And, Did you need your inhaler this morning? Yeah, I always use it going into surgery. It's, if, if nothing else, it's precautionary, but... Okay. Let me take a listen to your lungs. I'm going to get you to sit up for me. Right. Open your mouth and take some deep breaths in and out. Again. Again. And one more. Okay, and come on, lean on back. What are you here? She does have some wheezing, so we will uh, give her a little bit more of the albuterol inhaler before we go back to the operating room. We're going to start giving you medication to help you go to sleep. It might sting just a little bit going in, but that will go away. Nice deep breaths. We're going to take good care of you. Susan, can you open your eyes? Mm -hmm. All right. Deep breath. Doing just fine. <laughs> just take a deep breath. Okay. Susan, can you open your eyes? You're going to use the brain technique, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, that sounds so good. Ah, sounds so good. Okay, I'm going to start your desk brain. There's no wheezing. There's no wheezing at all? No wheezing at all. We've had a, a patient who clearly had asthma in the holding area. Tell us how you managed this patient and have gotten to this place where we are right now. Well, she uh, took albuterol inhaler in the holding area. Mm -hmm. She had a few puffs of that. We brought her back to the operating room and anesthetized her airway by having her gargle with viscous lidocaine mm -hmm. and then we induced the patient after pre-oxygenation with propofol. Mm -hmm. She also received uh, fentanyl and Versed mm -hmm. and after the propofol produced apnea in the patient I inserted the LMA mm -hmm. and desferane was turned on at 6%. At a high flow. At a high flow, that's correct. And she had. Did you add any nitrous oxide to that? 
Yes, 50% nitrous oxide. Mm -hmm. And with induction, she's had no wheezing, and she currently has no wheezing. So desferrin didn't precipitate any wheezing? No, it did not. What concentration of desferrin are you at? Well, we are delivering 7% right now, and her end title is 4.6%. And that 7% is now in a, a much lower flow rate than we started with, right? Correct. So we got a flow rate of what now? We have a flow rate of about a liter now. So we're doing pretty well? She's doing really well now. We're going to begin the procedure in a moment, and we may need to get to a deeper level of anesthesia. How much anesthetic do you think we could give her? Well, her entitle is at 5.5% now, and, and a MAC desferrin is 6. Okay, we'll get that up to 8%, see what changes. Okay. Okay, we've gotten up to 8% by turning the desferrin concentration up. What can you tell me you see now? Well, her entitle CO2 has gone up slightly. To how it's high? now at uh, 47. Okay. And blood pressure has decreased. Okay. Now at 96 over 55. And her tidal volumes have also decreased. So we've clearly depressed the breathing. But what about the chest? What about her wheezing? Has any of that come back? Let me take a listen. is not wheezing at all. So we might actually have caused further bronchodilation by increasing the dust ring, but we can't tell because she wasn't wheezing at 6% or 5%, was she? Right. Okay. Sounds like she's doing very well. She is doing well. We have an illustration here of the fact that dust ring, despite its potential irritant qualities, uh, does not precipitate or does not necessarily precipitate bronchospasm. It certainly didn't at concentrations less than 6%, and we wouldn't expect it to because it doesn't have irritant qualities there. But even when we went to 8%, there wasn't an issue of bronchoconstriction, at least as could be defined by wheezing. We also learned in this simple illustration that all patients will be susceptible to the respiratory depressant effects of desferrin or sevoflurane or isoflurane or halothane. All of them will show this increase in PCO2 with an increase in anesthetic concentration. Let's return to that issue of airway irritant qualities. And uh, remember this slide. It says, give two MAC of desferrin. You get evidence of respiratory irritation. You also get it with isoflurane, but not quite as much. And with sevoflurane, you get nothing. But at one MAC, you get no evidence of respiratory irritation. They're all the same. And that applies broadly uh, in terms of respiratory effects. We're going to see that using an LMA, it doesn't matter which anesthetic you choose in terms of respiratory effects because the concentrations that are used during maintenance of anesthesia, where we're talking about the use of the LMA, the concentrations that are used are all in the range like this that doesn't produce respiratory irritation. So the incidence of coughing, for example, in our patients who were given LMAs, and there were several of these, you'll see was zero. We didn't see any patients with coughing. The incidence, in fact, in various studies for desferrin and isoflurane and sevoflurane and propofol, it's all the same. It's all around 5%, 6%, 7%. And there's no difference among the anesthetics in the response of the airway with administration of anesthesia via an LMA. Betty, we've seen the video now. Uh, would you have anesthetized this patient with uh, an LMA and de using desflurane? Well, I think I'd have to qualify my answer by saying it depends on how the patient presents that day. If the patient presents in active asthma, that would be with wheezing or congestion in the holding area, I think that has to be treated prior to the induction. And I agree with you completely, Betty. I think if you can get resolution of the wheezing, then I would proceed with an intravenous induction, probably with propofol, lidocaine, and maybe a little bit of ketamine. 
put the LMA in and, and turn on the desflurane. Uh, if the patient's actively wheezing, it's a bit more controversial, uh, but I don't like giving positive pressure through an LMA in a patient that's wheezing, and I'm more likely to put an endotracheal tube in.